all those times, it's just, hmm, basically my sermon has been preached. Hey, God has. He just does it. Hey, do you believe it? The, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do anything. Yeah. And that's the reason we do do what we do. That's a lot of do. Yeah. 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 So the power of the Holy Spirit. God can tell Melissa something. He can tell Billy the same thing. That's what I thought was You know what? That's God. Daddy? I could be thinking something in California. And Harry could be over here in North Carolina thinking that. The Holy Spirit puts the same burden on both of your hearts at the same time. You may, I've heard that many, many times. Jerry Fire said, that's, that's my. He said, two people thinking the same thing, neither one knowing the same thing. He said, that's my. He said, he knew that was about five. But the Holy Spirit, like we said, is everywhere all the time. God is everywhere all the time. And His people, guess what? If you're saved here today, you have the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ apart from God the Father sent His Son down here tonight when He went back to heaven to make intercession for us. He sent His Holy Spirit, the same power that Jesus worked under, the power of the Spirit that He worked by while He was here on earth, resides in us. Amen. Amen. That ought to just, that ought to scare you to death and that ought to just pump you up too. Yeah. Get fired up. That, that'll do something with a good song. Yeah. I heard that song on the radio. And that, he's right. It's time for the church to do something. We are the body. We are Christ's body. He chose to work through us. He could have done it all. He could have said, save, 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 and the rest. So, but that is not how he operates. He says, I'm not willing that any should perish. Amen. He said, I don't want nobody to perish. He said that hell was created for the devil and his angels. Not you and me. We were not created to go to hell. We were created to be Christ's child, to live everlasting with Him. And through Jesus' sacrifice, we have that opportunity. But He gave us a church. You can be hard-headed like me all the time to do what you want to do, or you can follow me. That's all it is. Amen. Let's go, Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, that everything we do is just for Him and through him that we can do anything. Lord, let us not ever forget that. And uh, Lord, for the one that's here this morning, that there will be glory to be saved. And Lord, that the many that are saved here, that uh, they will be drawn close to you, and we would uh, we would do so. Not not uh, neglect your sacrifice and the pain and suffering, the agony that you went through to become sin that you could condemn it for us. And we could have a home in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Three chapters, Adam? Yes. How long are you going to take? I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, we got no control there. We got all kinds of time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all ready? All right. First, First Corinthians chapter 12, 12 through 14. <clears throat> says, For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into the one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink in the one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. I'm going to ask you a question, you're going to think I'm crazy. But, and you can go either way here. Are you a church member? Or are you a member of the church? 
as the part of the body that God has made them to be. Amen. Some of you are ears, the greatest listeners. That's what some people need. <clears throat> some of you are the mouth, the nose, the eyes. Some people can see things that other people can't see. God has given you the, pipe, the spiritual gift of discernment. Paul is very good at it. He can judge a person's character pretty quick. You can't. If you don't think you can, hang out with him about 20 minutes to figure you out. <laughs> he will. He, 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 God has given him that gift. The Holy Spirit tells him something's wrong with that person if there's something wrong. Or if they're genuine, he, he knows if they're genuine or not. God has given him that gift. And many others here have that gift. But the body cannot function if the body doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Are you a functioning member of the church? The one that Jesus died for? Are you going to have a, allowing your arm to bend around somebody and give them a hug? Are you the need that helps the leg walk? See, God didn't design us to give us that example for a reason. We can understand that. Paul set that on his heart. He was trying to tell the Corinthians, y'all are messed up. The church at Corinth was messed up. They had let carnal stuff come in. <coughs> they were worrying about stuff that didn't matter. They, they weren't preaching the gospel as it should be. <coughs> they were needed to do something. And Paul was trying to tell them, the body's got to work right. It's got to be one with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. His Holy Spirit is the key to all of us function as we should. And then, like I said, some want to be something else. Well, guess what? You're out of the will of God. You are. And I, I've done it. I said, boy, I wish I could do that. God tell me he has told me to do something and I choose I want to do something else. I'm out of will God. God, I wish I could do that. I didn't call you to do that. I called you to do this. I've already got somebody to do this. God, who believes that God knows what he's doing? Now, who am I to mess that up? I ain't. God says, do what I say. Now, God has given us many gifts. Some want to be other parts of the body. The big right tongue. Very important for balance. It is. Really. The back, the shirt, the back, the spine, everything comes to the back. God has given us that gift. They give to each and every one. We must work. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, some want to complain. I complain. My back <coughs> hurts, my legs hurt, my knee hurt, my head hurt. But I ain't what I'm talking about. He said, 
If you live a lifestyle of complaining, you're going to live a lifetime in the wilderness. So guess what? The children of Israel that complained against their holy God that brought them out of the land of Egypt, took them across the, the whew, took them across the sea on dry land, was fussing. Said this food don't taste good. Oh, we should have been in this thing in Egypt. We had three meals a bed and three hot sugar God. We had to work real hard. But at least we took care of we're gonna die in the world. We're gonna die. They didn't wait until the promise came. I'm saying, I'm not saying if you're saved and you complain, you're gonna lose your salvation. I'm saying the children of Israel complained against the Holy God and they did not get to see the reward of those that held true to the Holy God there when He promised them they would go to the promised land if they would just trust Him. Yeah. <coughs> they spent a lifetime in the wilderness. They died <coughs> in the wilderness. If you, the preacher said if you have a lifestyle of complaining, you're going to have a lifetime in the wilderness. I don't want to live in the wilderness. Do you want to live in the wilderness? I don't. But look, don't complain. Do something. That's all so appropriate. I didn't know what the hell God had it all worked out. But it's, it's just awful. He gave me this message about two weeks ago. He said, you want to talk about the church? I said, what do you want to talk about the church? He said, do something. Then they sang the song. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm not going to read it. I might read it all. I don't know. You've got a gift. How do you use it? Do you use it for your glory? Do you use it for, for your, your ambitions and the things that you do for, for, to give you glory? No. I want you to look. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is. is is dubbed the love chapter. It has been read at many weddings, many other places, but I want you to look where God put it. He put it in between, right there, spiritual gifts. The church is one body. And then in chapter 14, he's talking about gifts again. Why did he put it there? He's talking about the church. This is how the church ought to act. This is how the church ought to operate in love. As though I speak with tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, which is love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So he said, even though I'm, I got a good voice, that's what I sound like. That's what I sound like. If I don't love anybody, that's, that's all I hear. Charlie Brown's teacher. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> If you don't love nobody, even though you can speak with the tongues of men and angels, you got to. I'm not very good at public speaking. I'm not good at speaking at all. But even though, if I was good at it, if I didn't love, my words didn't have love in my heart, I wasn't speaking this out of love, it would be useless. Useless. Now look, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I can remove mountains and have my charity, I'm nothing. If I could say, mountain, go there and go there. But if I had no love, the love of Jesus Christ in my heart didn't have it, it would be useless. What good would it be? Yeah. Uh, useless. Yeah. And though I was to all bills and feed the poor and give it, and though I give my body to be burned and have my charity and not love, it profited me nothing. Love suffering long and is kind. Did you get that? Long suffering. Look, Jesus, God is the epitome of love. God is love, the Bible says. I would have given up on me a long time ago. 24 or 5 years would be too long. <coughs> but God says, I'm not willing that any should perish. All should come to repent. He's long suffering. He gives. 
Many in the Old Testament over two to four hundred years to repent, and they didn't. Long suffering, love is long suffering and kind. Now look here, charity envy is not. <coughs> you got envy in your heart today? Oh, if you do, give that. Give it to Jesus. We talk about the church, remember? This is love. This is how we should operate. Charity bond is not itself. It's not puffed up. Yeah. That's right. That's not love. Say, so look at me, look at me. How many churches are, right, are going around? Look at us. Look at all this shiny stuff we have. And not preaching the word. Not lifting up Jesus Christ and His sacrifice. Does not, verse 5, does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. What? I think evil sometimes. Do y'all? Somebody cuts you off in traffic, I think evil. <laughs> I hope you have a rip. <laughs> but I hope your name don't, don't get hurt. <coughs> Somebody passed me on, on, on the barrier in the middle of the interstate. You know, the concrete barrier? I was in Hammer Lane. Here he comes. <coughs> you moron. <laughs> you gonna wreck me and everybody behind us. Was that appropriate? No. Was I thinking they were, I, thought, I should have said, Lord God, convict that man and just get him saved before he kills everybody on his ear. <laughs> I didn't have love in my heart at that point in time. I should have. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, verse 6, but rejoiceth in the truth. Do you have fun doing bad stuff? Or do you love the truth more than what you love today? I know this is hard. It's hard on me. Verse 7, Bearing all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Love never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away when <sighs> Paul says, when I see Jesus, <coughs> my faith is going to end inside. <coughs> my longing for, my hope to see my Savior is going to end because there he's going to be. I'm going to be with him forever and ever. Guess what? It's not going to leave. Love. Love. God is a everlasting love. We are going to be there with Him. That's what He's talking about. When that which is perfect is coming, and all that in part is going to be done away with Him. But love will remain. This is when I was a child, speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childhood things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know it even, as also I know. Now I'm about to play full charity with these three, but the greatest of these is charity, which you love. Now, are you a church member, or are you a member of the church? Are you a functioning part? Of Christ's body, or is your name just on the world? Everything we do should be done for the glory of God and the building of His kingdom. And 1 Corinthians 14 12 says, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous, the spiritual gifts seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Christ's kingdom. The church is not this building. 
the people of the church. Christ never said that four laws and roots make a church. We meet, the church meets here. If you are saved here today, you are a part of Christ's body. You are the church. And if we are not building up the church, we are tearing down the church. If what I say does not edify another member of the body, what does it do? Edifying is building up. Encouraging. <coughs> holding them up. Loving them. If I'm not edifying, what am I doing? I'm tearing down. <coughs> I'm complaining. I'm fussing. I'm saying, why did you do that for? Thank you. 